So you have your Zoology 2 science book from Apologia and you're ready to dive into lessons, but you're wondering what exactly do lessons look like? Am I doing it right? How long does it take? And are there any tips and tricks to help me make this process go smoother? Today, we're gonna cover all of that as I share with you guys what a typical week worth of lessons looks like in our homeschool, as well as tips and tricks we've learned after using Apologia for over 10 years. So let's get started. So let's start with what does a lesson look like? Well, the great thing about it is it is the easiest thing you will ever do in your homeschool because it requires little to no prep. All you have to do is gather your kids ages kindergarten through sixth grade in one space and read the required lesson. There are optional things you can do as well, and we'll get into that here in just a second, but it comes down to a simply reading lessons and doing hands-on science experiments. But let me break that down into a bit more detail. Before we start every chapter, there's really not a lot of prep that I need to do as the parent. It's incredibly open and go. However, for my own planning purposes, I oftentimes as the teacher will sit down, look over the lesson and see what experiments or activities are suggested within that chapter. I will then decide which ones would I like to do here at home? Which ones am I just gonna skip and not do at all? And which ones do I want to save for co-op? So we do a co-op once every two weeks with a bunch of friends who are doing the same science textbook and the host family is the one that will choose what are the different science experiments we're gonna do for that day all together as a group. And then that way it allows me to see what supplies I need. In the back of the book, there is a supply list so I can easily look at that there as well. And then I just text the moms at that point at the beginning of the week saying, hey guys, in two weeks when we meet, here's what I need you to bring. And that's literally all the prep that I have to do. When it comes to how we actually do the reading portion of the lessons, it just depends on the day. So some days I'll gather my girls around and I will read out loud to them. Other days, we will do this on the go using the audio version. And sometimes we do it at home using the audio version. So lots of different ways to mix it up, but each day ends up being only about 10 to 15 minutes of reading time. I know one thing a lot of people see when they see these textbooks is they see how much text is in on each page and they start to get a little overwhelmed or they think it's gonna be too much. But in reality, it actually is only about 10 to 15 minutes every single day that you're doing it. And did I mention you're not meant to do science every single day. If you follow their recommended schedule, you'll do science twice a week and so you'll finish one chapter every two weeks. This makes it super doable and offers a lot of flexibility so that if something comes up and you don't get to science one day you can definitely just do it another. If you have really young kids or you're struggling with their attention span a little bit no problem you can divide it into four days and do an even shorter lesson of only five to seven minutes each day. One of my little bonus tips for you is if you choose to get the student journal in the very front of the student journal is a suggested list of activities of what pages you would read each day, what notebooking journal pages you would do, and so on and so forth. I simply rip that out of the front. I cut off the little extras um, at the edge, hole punch it, and stick it into my teacher notebook so I can follow along with that schedule as we go. I can modify that as I want, but I like the fact that the work is already done for me when it comes to lesson planning. The notebooking journals are definitely optional. However, I will say they have made some changes to them that make them an even better solution, especially for multiple ages. The Zoology 2 is the first one that I've actually gotten to experience like this, but they have now gotten rid of their junior version and the regular version, and they've kind of made a hybrid version. This works for all ages, and it makes it so much easier for me as a parent when I'm teaching multiple ages to be able to say, go to page six and it's the same in everybody's books they can choose through the activities or not when it comes to that schedule that you'll see at the front of the book they do schedule in specific activities into that built-in lesson plan but they don't schedule the coloring pages or the fact finding pages this is just a simple note taking section where your children can write down fun facts that they learn I like to have my kids do that each and every day to color while they're listening to me read and to add in different facts onto that fact page, but it's not technically built in, which makes it easy for you if you're trying to manage or you feel like it's too much, just skip it and move on. So for me, I am doing it with my sixth grader, with my first grader and with my second grader. And so we all sit down in the morning, I will open up the textbook, they will open up their student journals, usually grab some crayons. I will have them write down a fact within the first few minutes minutes of me reading um, just so that they're getting in that habit of note taking. They're not natural note takers yet as my sixth grader is has some special needs. So we're kind of modeling that and teaching that. So I personally have them write down a fact before they start coloring. 
after they've written down that fact, then they can start coloring and listening. And if they want to take additional facts, they can do that as well. Each day typically ends on either an activity that you will do as your last thing for the day, an experiment, or a what do you remember section. This is just some questions that you can ask your child to check for understanding and comprehension. All of the answers to each of these questions are in the back of the book. So it makes it really easy for you to check as the parent to make sure everybody is on the same page. But we simply read through it. We discuss a few things that stand out to them that are interesting to them. Sometimes we will add on watching a YouTube video on a specific topic. Each of Apologia's textbooks comes on the very first page with a code and a special website that you can go to with additional resources broken down by chapter. We don't do this every single time, but if there is a particular chapter that is captivating to them, or maybe that they're struggling with the concepts and need an additional boost, then we will go to that website, enter the code, and then have a whole bunch of already pre-looked through quality resources at our fingertips that we can utilize with our kids. Now, when it comes to the different activities that are inside the student journal, which again is optional, you don't have to do the student journal. If you prefer not to add in the handwriting aspect or some of the hands-on components, you can just choose to um, have them listen and even just write or journal in a notebook if you prefer. But for us, one of the things that I like about it is there's opportunities for a lot of cut and paste for making little fact books about things that my kids really enjoy. There's crossword puzzles and other opportunities to engage with the information. A little tip though, is if you have younger students who are struggling with more of the writing, I have a child that has juvenile arthritis, so her hand starts hurting pretty easily after a lot of writing. And then of course, having two younger writers, sometimes what we'll do, like for this particular activity, we were labeling the different oceans and where they are. Instead of having them write out each of those words, I simply grabbed a note card and wrote out the oceans, cut them apart and let them glue it on. So they still got the opportunity to label and to learn, but they didn't have to go through actually handwriting that out. Just a little tip to help things go smoother. So another little tip for you when it comes to scheduling this is instead of choosing to do it on Mondays and Wednesdays or Tuesdays and Thursdays, consider doing a rotation or what's called a loop schedule. So for this, you would loop this with another subject. So we do it with history. So we do science one day, history one day, science one day, history one day, which means that Ideally, Monday and Wednesdays are science days. But if we miss school on Tuesday, I don't wanna completely miss out on doing history. So we just do science first. The next day that we do school, we do history and so on and so forth. This helps to make sure that we're getting equal parts to all of the different subjects and helps to kind of relieve some of the stress. Note with experiments, you don't have to do them all. But a little tip, if you do want to enjoy them, but maybe don't want to get into every single one of them, is consider looking up some of the experiments on YouTube and seeing other people do those experiments. We also love to get the kits from Nature's Workshop Plus. They come already with Ziploc bags and everything labeled lesson one, lesson two, lesson three, and so on and so forth. And you're able to easily go in and get just the experiment kit that you need for that particular experiment. And then it'll have just a few additional things to add in, things like an egg or water, things that they obviously can't ship. Overall, I am very excited to jump into this year of underwater creatures and getting to learn all about things things ocean related and animals. My girls are already absolutely loving this first week of classes and this book covers so much. If you want to look more inside of this book and what it offers, be sure to check out this video here. Or if you want to check out other Apologia books that we've done, be sure to check out these videos here.